If you're new to watercolor, you've probably struggled to figure out the right ratio of watercolor paint to water. In today's video, professional watercolor artist and teacher Jean-Pierre Shibazawa is going to show us how to overcome that hurdle. For today's exercise, you will need a watercolor brush, round, any size will do, watercolor paper, watercolor paints, and water. Today's video is a free clip taken out of June's Introduction to Watercolor course that is great for absolute beginners. If you're ready to start, let's dive right in. One question I get very often, and it's a great question, is how much water do I use? How much water should I use on my, for my, my brush or my painting or whatever? That's a good question, but it depends. What does it depend on? And what are we, what are we talking about here? So I'm going to do, this is almost going to be like, um, I don't know if it's like chemistry class or what, but it's, we're going to kind of look at things in a little bit of a granular level. So what I'm going to do is first, I have my brush. I, I slightly dampened it, but not really very much. Okay. If you have your brush in your hand, just you can put it in your water and, and basically just, just to kind of like, let's say, make it a little bit damp, but then you can, you can just sort of like wipe it on your hand. So that to release a little bit of that moisture. Okay, now um, what I want to do is I want to activate one of the paints in the in the pan here. If you don't have pan paints, you could use it. You could use two paints. It's fine. It's totally fine. What I would like to do is come up with a, a ratio, roughly of about one to one, meaning paint to water. Now, if you're like, well, how the heck am I going to really see that? I would say, imagine you're trying to get the consistency of about like syrup or tree sap. That's pretty thick. So I'm, I'm ballpark saying one to one. Okay, so let's just say one to one. I'm gonna just put some strokes down and you guys could see how thick it is. Like I can't really get do much with it. It's pretty dry brushy. Just go for it. You can just put a stroke down. If you want, you can write this stuff down. Uh, I'm gonna just say sap one to one ratio. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add just one drop. So if you guys wanna watch and then try it um, after you see it first, just gonna do one drop and I'm gonna just put it into that mixture I just did. So it's like, let's say a one to two. So this is a little bit more fluid. So I'll say this is, I guess, syrupy or a little bit more, a little bit, it's still quite thick. I'm gonna now do that uh, with about two more drops. Maybe while I do that, I'll just put this down, one to two. So it's still, it's actually quite thick, but it's not as thick as what I just did with the one to two. It's, it's got a little bit more of a flow to it. Um, so if you want to, I'll say this is more like creamy, like heavy whipping cream. It's about one to four. There's basically more flow and we're moving away from this sort of thicker dr matte dry, dry brush effect. All right, now I'm gonna just add about four more drops. You can see I'm just move, like kind of doubling it every time. And now what I have here is a sort of, it's I got a definite flow of paint. I would say this is more fluid. I can move the brush across. And now I'll just really charge it up and I'm just adding a bunch of water. And by adding water, I'm literally, so just tr transferring drop, drop by drop. So I, I did about eight more and it's much more, it's much more watery. It's, it's much thinner and it flows. It, it can flow very far. So instead of just this little box that I have, it could probably be a much greater, it could be a much greater shape much larger. And of course I can keep going. I mean, I can, I can go where there's just, you know, one to a hundred um, as far as a ratio. And, and the truth is that's something that I want to bring up because as far as the, the, the movement of the paint and how, how thick it can be, there's so many factors that can be, that can um, change it. It could be the tonality, how dark or how light it gets. Cause this will, more added water you add, of course, it's gonna be much lighter. It could also affect the drying time, you know, how, how long or how slow uh, versus how quickly it might dry. 
Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on the ones on the first, like the, the sap, the syrup one, they, they're all they they all have this kind of like matte look to them. They're not as transparent. So watercolor is a, it's a transparent medium typically, but actually you can actually become it could be quite opaque depending on how thick you make it. And of course, how much texture you can show. So depending on how much you want to add, I, I find that many beginners will actually, they'll lean a little bit more to the watery stage because if they have, let's say a little bit of um, like a, a fresh pa pa palette, they touch it just a little bit and then, they, and then they will add a lot of water and then they'll do a stroke and they could see the color. They can see that there's a little bit of color, but they don't really get in there. They don't really mix the paint. Um, so what I recommend is when you're thinking about how, how much water to add, you think about like how much of a, of a release and a flow of color do you want? And so I, I suggest at least like kind of in this range usually, as far as a ratio, like one to eight to one sixteen, sort of like a, you know, you want it to be transparent. You don't want it to be, to be too thick, but you want, you want it to have some body, some, some color there. Of course, it depends. It depends on what exactly you're trying to do. If you're doing like a detail with a lot of texture, if you're going to do a big washy atmospheric application of paint, then maybe you want it to be, you know, more watery. So it just depends. And that's it for now. Was this tutorial helpful? Is there anything else you'd like to learn? Let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to continue learning, follow our playlist where you can access part of the course for free. Jun will go over many topics such as types of watercolor paper, watercolor paints, brushes, and also what is wet on wet, wet on dry, glazing, layering, and many other techniques followed by exercises. Until next time, make more art.